let's start by talking about money. From Wall Street to Main Street, both overseas and at home, money is the one tool used to measure personal and business income and as it's accumulated wealth, wealth in the context of money. Finance is the study of money, how it is made, how it's lost, and how it's managed. This module will introduce you to the role of money and the financial system within the economy as this is strictly defined. Money as strictly defined or currency is anything that is generally accepted in exchange for goods and services. Materials such as diverse as, diverse as salt, cattle, fish, shells, cloth, or even precious metals, gold, silver, etc have long been used in various cultures as a type of money. While paper money was first used in North America in 1685 and even earlier in Europe, the concept of fiat money, as it's called, that is paper money that's not readily converted to a precious metal such as gold, but is rather a statement by a governing body that this debt will be paid, did not gain full acceptance until the Great Depression in the 1930s. In the United States, paper money is really a government note or a promise that's worth the value that's specified on the note. That's really what a paper, what paper currency is. So money, medium of exchange. Before fiat money, the trade of goods and services was accomplished through bartering, trading one good or service for another of similar value. As any school-aged child knows, bartering can become quite inefficient, particularly in the case of complex three-party type transactions involving peanut butter sandwiches, baseball cards, and even hair barrettes. There had been a much simpler way, and this was to decide on a single item, that is money. This is, can be freely exchanged and converted from one item to another. Everything sort of passes through the value of money. For centuries, people on the Micronesian island of Yap used giant round stones like the one shown in this picture uh, for money. This, uh, these, the, stories, the stores that aren't moved, but they're left where they are, but their ownership, the ownership of these stones can be change hands and that's how transactions occur and that's how wealth is accumulated by accumulating money or control of these stones as a measure of value money serves as a common basis from which to gauge the relative value of goods or services in a sense money is the common denominator that allows people to compare different goods and services that can be consumed on a particular income level we all have money as a measure of the value of our earnings, purchases, and what we own. Money serves as a way to accumulate wealth or buying power for later use. It is a store of value because we can accumulate it until we later decide we want to use it. If, due to rapid inflation, all prices are doubling every year, then the purchasing power or the value of money that is stuffed in a mattress, if you would, would fall by half. On the other hand, deflation occurs when prices of goods fall. Deflation might seem like a good thing for consumers, but in many ways, it can be just as problematic uh, as inflation. Periods of major deflation often lead to decreases in wages and increases in debt burdens. If you think about that, you can understand why. If the value of your money the prices in the economy are going down, the value of your money is going up, you're much better off not to spend anything because the value will continue to increase and you'll be able to buy more. So why buy? And so that stops commerce, which is why it can cause a, it can have the, the implications of a decline or a contraction in the economy. There are several different characteristics that we apply to describe money. It must be acceptable, divisible, portable, stable in value, durable, and difficult to counterfeit. Acceptability means that 
Money must be readily acceptable for the purchase of goods and services. People must be willing to accept this particular item. It must be divisible in that you can divide it up into smaller pieces and you could decide how many of the particular units you want to sell, you know, dollars and cents and that sort of thing in the United States. And no surprise, it's no surprise that the important, the principle of divisibility is an important one. It must be portable. Clearly, you must have it with you as some medium of exchange at the location of the next transaction. And it must be stable and maintain some level of its face value. It also should be difficult to counterfeit. You don't want people making fake stuff that gets in the middle of the, the money system and can cause confusion. The U.S. government redesigns its currency periodically to stay ahead of counterfeiters in the public, uh, which is getting more and more difficult with high um, high resolution printers and the like so there's things added to the paper and holograms and all this thing um, around 75 percent of counterfeit currency is found and destroyed before it ever even reaches the public that's the uh, the secret service in the u.s uh, tracks publish or tracks uh, counterfeit currency and they uh, do their best and they generally do a very good job of it um, next in the next lecture we'll talk about types of money